Why greetings, adventurer. I sense that you are quite the busy soul, much like myself. Do you, perhaps, not have as much time to play your favorite game Diablo 2 as you'd like, and when you do, find yourself not being blessed by the RNG gods? Well, if that correctly describes you, then this video is just for you because I'm going to show you a very consistent strategy that will allow you to get rich in Diablo 2 without relying on the whims of RNG. And with that, my adventure, stay a while and listen, and let us get into the video. So I'm actually going to split this guide up into two parts. First, I'll cover my initial character that I started out with and how I started to build wealth with it, followed by my second character that also actually synergizes really well with this first one and how everything started to sort of snowball. So this assassin you see right here is indeed my first character and I actually started it thinking that the latter season would start very soon right after launch. And so I thought I'd create a character just for fun and also to learn the class a bit better. Little did I know that the assassin turns out to be one of the best and most efficient ladder starting characters or in this case for the game's launch. Now popular Diablo YouTuber Cooley also put out a video detailing why he thinks the assassin is one of the best ladder starting characters and also a tutorial for it and I'll link that video down below in the description if you're interested. And as for my own strategy, I've primarily, especially early on, been farming Keys of Destruction and other things from Nilathak with my budget assassin. With it, I've been able to build up wealth quite consistently and even with a very busy schedule. In my opinion, this is one of the best strategies to use if you only have limited time to play, for example, say an hour a day, because you'll almost always come out with something more per play session. And with that, let's get right into part 1, which is my assassin's gear and my simple farming strategies. So first, I just want to point out that my gear is really nothing impressive, and the fact is that you really don't need to have good gear to be able to do this on an assassin. And I have indeed been able to do Neil Thack runs with much worse gear at that, and quite safely. Anyhow, taking a look at my current gear as a recording of this, my MF is at about 321, although you really don't need MF to farm Nilathak, especially for keys because it's not affected. As you can see, my resistances are pretty crappy, but I use Fade to compensate for that. My plus skills is currently at plus 8, with traps being at about 14, but again, you really don't need that much plus skills because of that sentry using Corpse Explosion on Nilathak, which will do tons of damage regardless. And now as for my sort of budget gear, I'm using Spirit on a broadsword, again very very cheap and easy to get, as well as Spirit in a Monarch Shield. And as for my chest piece, I'm currently using Skolder's Iron mainly for the MF, which I luckily found from Eldritch, but you definitely don't have to use this. In fact, you can use something like Treachery, which is also freely inexpensive, the rune word that is, and it'll actually boost your trap power uh, by providing plus 2 assassin skills. For my helm, I have a plus 3 to traps, plus 20 something MF, plus a socket with a P Topaz in it, circlet, which again is completely optional. In fact, I was actually using the lore rune word, which is again super cheap and also quite viable as well. Now for the gear overall, it's really what you want to optimize for, right? For example, I have this plus 2 to traps amulet here just to give me a bit more power, but with all the plus skills that I have, which again isn't too much, I feel like that's already enough to get the job done fairly efficiently, and so the rest of my gear is mostly just survivability where I can get it, like resistances mainly, as well as MF uh, primarily. Now you'll notice that I do have an assassin torch, which some people would not consider really budget gear, but the fact is I was actually able to trade for it after farming the number of destruction keys I needed, which I then traded for additional hate and terror keys to form a key set to then trade for this one torch, which means um, I was indeed able to farm you know, this farm quite successfully. And just to show you my skills really quick, it's pretty much just a standard trap build with a little bit of Shadow Disciplines into Mind Blast and I actually really like Fade for the survivability and I'll explain a bit more about that later. But essentially you just want to max Lightning Sentry, Death Sentry and all their respective synergies with Fire Blast being the last one you want to put points into. And now before we actually jump into the run, I also need to mention a crucial piece of gear for your weapon swap which will actually be a teleport staff, which by the way you can actually shop and you can just keep remaking games uh, in Act 3 from Ormus I believe. So you can just keep making games and can, until you find your teleport staff, which will actually make this strategy extremely uh, viable because in the Halls of Pain where Nilothak is, there's actually only three specific uh, routes for you to teleport with as opposed to say like Endar 
Argyle or Mephisto where the maps are more randomized although you can sort of go left you know of the waypoint or whatever but in this case uh, having a teleport staff you never run out of charges and you only really need to make you know 8 to 10 teleports to get to the next level which again makes this strategy just much more viable and doesn't make the assassin significantly slower than a sorceress. Also you notice at the beginning of the run that I cast fade before teleporting because it's very helpful for keeping me alive during teleporting and also for surviving Nila Thang's corpse explosions which do physical and fire damage and can actually hit from a huge range and will kill many characters um, that attempt to do this including sorceresses right because especially since they're quite squishy as well and so that's another benefit of having an assassin is uh, fade helping you survive at least one corpse explosion and also that she naturally has quite high life if you just pump up your um, vitality not to mention with your traps, especially death sentry, you can definitely just kill Nilothak from afar very very safely. And also because Nilothak naturally has corpses around him, you can actually use your death sentry to basically explode his corpses and thus killing him faster and without necessarily great gear. And so all these factors not only make the assassin one of the best budget characters for farming keys of destruction, but also because other classes can't farm it quite as efficiently or safely, this makes these keys actually worth more than the other ones, meaning that you can oftentimes trade one destruction key for two of the other keys, or sometimes two for three. And as you can see here, I've been advertising and trading my keys and other stuff on Discord channels like Mr. Llama Assis and the Brunskis. And another thing you can do is to just name your games whatever items you want to be trading. So for example, whenever you're making a new run, you can just name it uh, such as 1D key for 2 of any other keys, or say 2D keys for 3 of the other keys. Now for just a couple more pointers, first of all, in Cooley's Assassin Guide, he mentions that you can actually farm Mephisto as well using your teleport staff, especially since we know that the Durance of Hate level 3 is usually on the left side, or always rather, uh, pointing left from the waypoint. However, I found that with the limited number of charges on a teleport staff, unless you have Nadja's Puzzler or obviously Enigma, but you probably wouldn't be doing this if you, if you have Enigma, because of how large the Durance of Hate can be, you sometimes do run out of teleport charges, which if you actually have to go back into town to repair your staff, not only will it cost you a ton of gold, but it'll also be a huge waste of time, right? So that's the primary reason I've largely stopped doing Mephisto runs on my assassin. Although I did get very lucky and got a Shaco from him very early on, right after the game launch, which I was able to sell for quite a bit of runes. But again, that was just a very lucky run, and nowadays I just focus mostly on Nilathak. And if I already have a good supply of destruction keys, I'll sometimes sprinkle in Pindle skin since he's nearby, as well as Eldritch and Shank. And again, the reason I really like this strategy with the Assassin and farming Nilithak is the consistency that it provides. On players 1, Nilithak has a roughly 1 in 12 chance of dropping a key of destruction, which is actually further increased if you join games or have friends to run games with at least 3 characters. Plus, if you manage to train up another character for uber runs, which will usually be a smiter, which can actually run on budget gear, this strategy will become even more efficient as you'll not only be able to trade your destruction keys up for additional other keys, but also you'll be able to do your own uber runs, which means you won't have to tip other people to do the runs for you. And I'll cover my uber smiting torch selling strategies in part 2, but for now, for this key running strategy, I actually really like it because while you won't be able to get necessarily that many GG drops or just drops for that matter, Matter, compared to some of the other popular MF routes like Mephisto, Ancient Tunnels, and Adariel. But with key farming, I'm almost always able to get at least one to drop during one play session, even a short one. For example, if I only have one or two hours to play on a weekday, I'll still be able to farm at least one or two keys, plus any of the other stuff that drops from the monsters, as well as Nilothak himself, which actually has a deceptively decent drop table, although he doesn't always drop that many items, he does have the capability to drop every non-quest item in the game. And so compared to having to pray to RNGs for a good drop, which likely will not happen during especially a shorter play session, key farming for me has been quite an enjoyable change of pace because even if I don't have that much time to play per session, I am still usually able to get something out of them. And speaking of Nilithak's drop table, Another nice bonus is that he alongside Diablo and Bale is one of the only units in the game capable of dropping a Grand Charm with the highest rolled affixes, the best ones being plus 1 to a certain skill tree and plus up to 45 life. And you can actually re-roll each Grand Charm that drops from him indefinitely until you get the affixes you want. And all you need is 3 perfect gems, which I've actually been able to clear up my inventory of without having to deal with the hassle of selling you know, bulk gems on Discord and whatnot. 
And with that, let's now move on to part 2 where I'll cover my uber smiter as well as my torch selling strategies. Alright, so this smiter here is the second character that I geared up and leveled up. And the rationale is that, again, since I already do destruction key farming and I'm actually also able to trade up for my keys and thus be able to collect key sets quite easily, I thought it'd be even more efficient if I was able to do my own uber runs without having to pay somebody else or tip somebody else to do them for me. And for this purpose, the Smiter is indeed the most budget friendly and possibly most viable character to do this with. Since the Smite skill is guaranteed to hit and thus you don't actually have to worry about attack rating, and also that the Paladin is a naturally tanky class capable of surviving most of what the Ubers are able to throw at you. And now getting into my stats, they're pretty standard. I've got just enough strength to wear my gear, enough dexterity for max block, which you do have to check and update every level as you level up, and the rest into vitality. Looking at my gear as of the recording of this, I was able to do ubers with very budget gear as you can see, a black rune word, which I've actually been able to upgrade into a grief lately, but it's definitely not required. Black is perfectly viable as well. I've got spirit in a paladin shield base, G face with a ort rune for lightning res, a sort of random all res amulet, which I've actually recently upgraded into a 30 all res blue amulet. And here we can actually also check out my advanced stats really quick. But anyhow, for my chest piece, I've got treachery to proc fade for a massive increase to resistances and even physical damage reduction. This is very inexpensive and yet very good, which you can actually also use just to fade and um, proc it. And after you do that, you can actually swap it out to a different armor. For example, I've actually been swapping to a smoke rune word, which is actually also very cheap and provides a whopping additional 50 to all res. And next for my boots, I have Goblin Toes, but more recently, Gore Riders. But either way, you want Crushing Blow, at least some Crushing Blow to be able to do Ubers with. And as for my rings, I first of all have Wisp Projector, which isn't exactly budget friendly, but you can definitely do without it and use something like a Lightning Res or All Res Ring. Uh, in addition to that, Raven Frost is also very good. I'm also wearing it because you actually need the Cannot Be Frozen. For my belt, I was using a Night Smoke for 10 All Res, which is pretty random, but you can definitely use anything you want really. For example, I recently swapped over to a Verdungo's Hardy Cord for some damage reduction or physical damage reduction, as well as a bunch of vitality. Otherwise, you can just use any belt with res that you have or something like a Thunder God's Vigor. And as for my gloves, now this is one of the pieces that I actually had to sort of go out of my way to purchase. And this is Dracul's Grasp, which has a chance of proccing the Cursed Life Tap, which you'll almost always need to survive against the Ubers as Lifesteal doesn't actually work with Smite. Now technically you can still get away with just using a life tap wand on swap and I actually still do use it against the bosses specifically. But I found that if you want to sort of clear your way to the bosses or also just kill off some of the minions around them, having Dracul's Scraps just makes things a lot more convenient as you don't have to actually swap back and forth to cast your life tap, right? And so to summarize, the essential things you'll need for your smiter, especially a budget smiter, are enough crushing blow, let's say 20-30%, to 30%, as well as life tap from a certain source such as usually Dracul's cools, and also enough resistances to usually just survive Uber Mephisto who has a mean conviction aura which will actually reduce your resistances further down even after the hell penalty. And then you also want cannot be frozen which will usually just come from Ravenfrost or something like a Tranguil's belt. And now for an optional additional weapon swap, I also like to have a teleport staff handy and this is in fact the same teleport staff that I've used on my assassin. However, I found that even though a lot of guides say that you can straight up teleport to the mini ubers bosses, namely Lilith and Izabul, I found this to be somewhat risky because especially if you're not very geared, you can actually teleport into packs of monsters that can kill you extremely quickly. And since you're wielding a teleport staff, you won't have your usual shield and weapon to help with that survivability as well. And thus, I actually prefer running to Lilith as opposed to teleporting, just by clearing out her matron's den room by room until I run into her. And as for Israel, I still teleport for the most part, but only after proccing Fade with my treachery and then swapping that out for smoke. And I've also been carrying a mercenary mainly for Israel and just sort of as a holder for my treachery rune wound while I actually swap it with smoke, right? And currently, I prefer Holy Freeze just for a bit of extra survivability that it gives me, especially when teleporting to Israel. By the way, in case you end up dying on a run, which you'll never know, right? Especially if it's one of your first times doing Ubers, you want to make sure to have a game name and password that you remember whenever you actually have to leave the game and rejoin in case your corpse run is not feasible. 
And for just a couple more tips regarding doing Ubers, again, I do prefer casting or pre-casting life tap on a boss with a life tap wand, even though I already have Dracul's grasp. And this is because, especially if you're on budget gear, sometimes your Dracul's or your life tap won't proc immediately after engaging a boss, and it might actually take a few seconds, during which if you don't have that much HP, you might actually get um, kill or risk getting killed before you actually get the chance to cast your life tap. And for Uber Mephisto, who again has that conviction aura which will reduce your resistances by I believe 125, you can also consider using Sanctuary Aura which I do also have a hard point into to just help pad your resistances in case they're not really capped yet against Mephisto. And so for my extended strategy for building wealth with both my key running assassin as well as my uber smiting paladin, I can actually very consistently, and you'll actually see this very frequently on discord um, selling channels as well, sell my ubers runs for 4 times 3 key sets, which means I get 1 extra key set per run of ubers, since 3 times 3 key sets are used to open all 3 portals to the mini ubers, right, in order to do 1 round of uber tristram. And what this means is for every 3 ubers runs that you sell, or actually unidentified torches that you sell for 4 times 3 key sets each, you'll actually end up with 1 extra free ubers run for every 3 runs that you sell. Now I know it's very tempting to identify every torch that you find, but personally I like to keep at least 1 unidentified torch handy, so then I can actually keep the snowball going by trading it in for 4 times 3 keys. And several reasons for this are that they're pretty much always going to be in demand for pretty much every class, and also that unidentified torches are actually worth quite a bit because if you think about it, the expected value of getting a paladin torch or a sword torch, which are usually the more valuable ones, is actually pretty low, right? And which means if you actually get a torch of any other class, as long as they're not like a super like maxed out stats, you know, high rolling torch, you're generally going to be selling that for less than what you would be for an unidentified version of it. Now that doesn't mean though that I don't enjoy the thrill of gambling sometimes as, as I just said, I do get an extra free so to speak ubers run after every 3 runs right because I actually get 4 key sets instead of 3 uh, for each torch that I sell. And so that extra free torch that I get every 3 runs will be that torch that I identify in hopes of getting a GG roll. Also, since my assassin can farm those keys of destruction pretty efficiently to help me supplement my key income, I've been able to be a bit more flexible and thus quicker with my torch selling by offering to trade things like my unidentified torch for 3 key sets plus a mount rune or 3 key sets plus 3 of any key just to give my keys a bit of a competitive selling edge especially on discord, although I still have found it quite easy to sell them for 4 times 3 key sets. And again, any excess keys that I end up with, especially destruction keys, since I still farm them, I can always trade them for the other keys that I need. And that'll be all for today's video. If you found it helpful, be sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also consider subscribing to my channel for additional content. Plus, let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to try this strategy or a similar one with different characters. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Peace.